Very often when I'm testing handhelds, I get to say things like, and at this resolution, we get pixel perfect integer scaling, or we don't get pixel perfect integer scaling, but the resolution is so high that that's not a problem. Or my mom told me that if I didn't clean my room, she's not making spaghetti. So I just shoved everything under my bed because I'm a freaking boss. And I think I've sort of failed you because I've never actually explained what integer scaling is or wh when it should be used or why you shouldn't just shove everything under your bed because your mom might look there and then you won't get your spaghetti. So that's what we're gonna do today. Are you excited? I'll answer for you, yes. First of all, let's break down the term integer scaling. Let's start with integer because that's the first word of the thing. And it's a pretty simple concept. There's a chance that even you can understand it. An integer is a whole number. It's not a fraction, no decimals, it's just a, just a number. If you have a pizza that is 12 slices, then you have 12 slices. Your friend can't come up to you and say, oh, hey, you have pizza, can I have 0.75 slices? Unless they are specifically asking for a piece that you already took a bite out of. But if that's the case, you can tell your friend, nope, sorry, you can't, that's not an integer. And they can watch you sadly as you finish eating the slice of pizza in front of their face without sharing. So integers are, are complete numbers, like one, two, three, four, five, seven, 845, no fractions or decimals allowed. Now, what is scaling? Scaling in the context of screens and computer images and retro games means that an original image is made bigger or smaller, usually bigger. So if an image is originally small and you make it fill the screen, that image is scaled up by a certain amount. A pretty simple concept, but it gets kind of messy when you consider scaling different pixel dimensions of images onto different pixel dimension screens. Speaking of which, let's talk about pixels. So d digital images like photos of your great aunt, or more appropriately, the images rendered when emulating retro games, are a certain pixel dimension. For example, let's take Streets of Rage on the Sega Genesis. This game is made to run at 320 by 240. 320 pixels wide by 240 pixels high. Everything in the game happens within those dimensions. If you're running this on a 320 by 240 screen, then there's no scaling. It's running at what we call native resolution, where the screen's resolution perfectly matches the input resolution. But if the resolution of your display is bigger than 320 by 240, then the game wouldn't fill up the screen. It would be small on the screen with a bunch of empty space. This is where scaling comes in. If your screen resolution was 640 by 480, that Sega Genesis game image can be scaled up to fill the screen. And then each pixel of the game becomes a 2x2 two two pixel in the scaled image. So the image fills the screen, but you still see the pixels sort of normally. It feels like your 320x240 game is running at the native resolution of your display. Actually, this is the reason that um, Sega Genesis and TurboGrafx-16 and PS1 games look so good on lots of these retro handhelds because very often on the cheap handhelds or even some of the more expensive ones actually they have 640 by 480 screens that's a very common resolution of these sorts of devices that's what we have on the miu mini and the rg35xx line and even the rg405v and the pow kitty rgb20s and the r36s that i just reviewed i'd say probably like half the retro handhelds out there have this resolution and for those games that run at 320 by 240, they scale up perfectly because a 2x integer scale means that each and every pixel can become a 2x2 two two pixel in the scaled image. That's what I mean when I say pixel perfect integer scaling. And when I say click the subscribe button, I don't mean sit there like a slug and watch the video without clicking the subscribe button. I mean click it. Just saying. But what happens when your input resolution does not scale pr perfectly to your output resolution? L let's look at Super Nintendo. This system ran at a resolution of 256 by 224 for lots of complicated reasons that I won't get into. What that means is that on retro handhelds, if you want the image to be scaled up using integers, then we won't be filling the screen. If we go with a 2x integer scale, then the image will become 512 by 448, which is smaller than 640 by 480. 
and that means that we'll have extra space that's not being used on the screen. Because integer scaling can only go by whole numbers, that means that the scaled pixels can, can't be fractional. You can't have a scaled pixel become 2.5 pixels because there aren't half pixels on a display. That, that scaled pixel will need to become a 2x2 two two pixel or a 3x3 three three pixel if we're using integer scaling. But why is this important? Well, it's not that important, really, if you're not picky. You can scale an image to fill the screen if you're not worried about integer scaling. So for this Super Nintendo game, we can have this 256 by 224 game scale up to fill the whole 640 by 480 screen. But the problem is that it's not scaled by a round number. So some of those pixels are 2x2 two two, and some of them are not. This is a super simple version of what's happening. If we take this 16 by 12 sprite of my cat, Hermione, who's my beautiful princess who loves me, and we scale it up to a screen that is 32 by 24. That works great and the image looks perfect because each pixel becomes four pixels. But what if our screen doesn't allow perfect integer scaling of that image? What if our screen is 40 by 30? Well, then when we scale this image up to fill the screen, then you'll see that it starts to look a, a little weird because some of the pixels become anywhere from 2x2 two two to 2x3, two 3x3, three, three three, and the overall image looks kind of chunky and weird. The, the pixels aren't balanced because we're not using integer scaling. We can't get perfect integer scaling for this image at this dimension. It's just not possible. So we either have to live with unbalanced pixels or we have to live with the image not filling the entire screen. And you can see this yourself in retro games. Because Super Nintendo games run at 256 by 224, which does not scale perfectly to 640 by 480. So in some situations, you'll see with your eyes that the pixels are not balanced. A famous example is the life bar in Mega Man games. When the image is scaled up to 640 by 480, you can see that the life bar doesn't have balanced segments. Some of them have bigger, thicker pixels than others. Is this a problem though? Well, m maybe not. M maybe you don't care. Or maybe you do care, so you'll turn on integer scaling, which means that the image scales perfectly, but you'll get some black bars around the outside of the screen. And you maybe you don't care about those. <laughs> There's no perfect solution in this case. But there is something you can do if you want the best of both worlds. The best solution here is to use a shader that attempts to smooth things out. <laughs> I know this video is kind of long, but bear with me. This is where we need to discuss interpolation. At a simple level, interpolation means how the image scaling behaves, how it looks after the scaling. The two basic versions of interpolation are nearest neighbor and bilinear. Nearest neighbor just means that the image is scaled and the pixel that is chosen is the closest whole pixel. Bilinear kind of smooths it out. Each pixel becomes kind of blurry, so there's no worry about which pixel is which. However, it does have a, a bit of a blurry look to it. There are interpolation shaders specifically designed for this task though. My favorite is the AANN shader, which means anti-aliased nearest neighbor. However, that's a demanding shader, so you probably shouldn't use it on your lower powered retro handhelds. Probably just use that on more powerful devices like a PC. On your handheld, you can use the pixelate shader. And this does the same thing, more or less, although it's a bit less accurate. Basically, it, it smooths out the image using bilinear interpolation, and then it flattens the image using nearest neighbor interpolation. Ultimately, it, it gives the feeling that your game is running using integer scaling. However, if you're looking really hard, like I tend to do, you will notice some imperfections. Still, for most use cases, this is probably your best bet on retro handouts. Just apply the pixelate shader, and then you don't have to worry about integer scaling at all. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to mention, uh, the higher the resolution of your screen, the less of a big deal integer scaling is. Because if you're on a high res screen, like a, a 1080p screen, your eyes will have a hard time noticing scaling issues. If you're scaling up a low res image, for example, a GBA title that ran at 240 by 160, when that's scaled up to 1080p, you probably won't notice that some of those pixels are 6x6 and some of them are 7x7. There's not much of a difference to your eyes at that resolution. This is why, for example, on the RGB 30, I don't mind scaling up Pico 8 games because the screen resolution is so high, it's at 720 by 720 so you won't be able to tell which pixels are 5x5 and which are 6x6. It's just not a big deal there. 
However, if you are a pixel purist, and I must admit that I fall into that category, you'll probably decide this stuff on a game by game basis. Some games I want to see those perfectly balanced original pixels, with the game sprites looking exactly as the developer intended. And in some games, I don't really care that much and I'd rather just have a big full screen experience, in which case I'll slap on a shader. The best situation is where your games do scale perfectly. This is one of the reasons that Sega Genesis and TurboGrafx-16 and PS1 look so dang good on 640x480 screens, because there we get that pixel-perfect integer scaling. And another good example is PSP on the RG505. That screen is literally pixel perfect 2x PSP resolution. So you'll get a better PSP scaling experience there than on any other retro handheld. I'm gonna make a whole video about PSP on the RG505, I think, because it's freaking glorious. Anyways, uh, I hope this helps you out. I hope this clears up any confusion. I hope you learned something. If you did, then tickle that <laughs> thumbs up button and spank that subscribe button if you haven't yet because I make lots of videos and you probably shouldn't let yourself miss them. I wouldn't want you to die with a life full of regrets of all the great tech tweet videos you missed after all. If you like this video, then check out this video where I explain how resolution scaling in PC games actually works. Another good topic that any gamer should be keen to learn about. There's a link on the screen now and down in the description below. And that's it for me. I have some spaghetti to go eat. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.